Obviously, a disappointing uh, game on Saturday. Very similar to what you know my thoughts are after that game. Um, you know, I really thought our kids played with a lot of energy, emotion, uh, passion. Um, really good effort uh, for the most part across the board. Uh, made some big plays in all phases of the game. I mean, you look at you know just special teams, which you don't usually see uh, big time plays in special teams. It's, you know, you see it on offense and defense interceptions, but to have a block punt. Um, and us not be able to scoop and score right there and get zero points from it. Um, and then, you know, we got we got a muffed punt return, which, you know, the guy dropped it and we're, you know, supposed to stay in front of him. And um, Byron did a great job of getting down there and getting on that ball. And PJ, I think, whoever the gunner was, tackled the return so he couldn't get back on it. Uh, but those are some big plays in that, in just the special teams, let alone what, what we did on offense with some of the explosives. Izzy was good, obviously, you know, the, the, the hurdle touchdown. Defensively played hard all day, and I think held an explosive team to, uh, um, to three explosives the entire day. Our goal was to hold them under four. We had three. Um, but, you know, three turned out to be too many, and, and uh, you know, we didn't score enough points to win the football game. So it's disappointing, but like I said, you know, we put that thing to rest uh, last night in here, and I hate even talking about it the next day, um, but uh, we're, we're moving on. we got a great Western Michigan team coming in or going up there, I guess, into Kalamazoo. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we got a challenge on our hands. They're well coached. Tim Lester does a great job. Um, Jeff Thorne, new OC, came uh, from over in Illinois uh, from Division Three school over there. Um, and um, Lou Esposito, their defense coordinator, has been there for a while and does a really good job. And um, they, they do a lot of similar things to us. So it'll be some carryover from what our kids, our, our offense sees every day in practice uh, with what they do, um, coverage-wise and front-wise. So um, there's some good things um, as far as that goes. So um, I'll open it up for questions. What issues have you seen with the offensive line after two games? Um, again, Good, good question, Chris. I mean, when you look at it, like we got better, okay. Um, sometimes, you know, again, like let's just go to the play before the half, and I know where you're going with it, like because I think maybe you guys asked this question just about you know the O line and protection, and sometimes our O line's got to get us out of it. Sometimes our you know quarterbacks got to get a, get us out of a bad play or redirect protections or whatever it may be. On the play before the half, you know, um, you know we, we should we should have the tailback staying in and protecting. We didn't do that. Um, and um, but you know O, o line overall. I mean, um, you know, you go back and look at the tape and, and you watch from the end zone. Like we're creating some some holes for the offensive line or for the for the running backs, not just on Izzy's big runs on ones that we throw RPOs. Like if we let it go and let it ride and hand it off the tailback. You know, go look at overtime and see what it looks like. Um, it's like you know, like hand the ball off and let's go. Um, but we didn't hand the ball off. We, we tried to throw it and didn't throw it very well when we tried to. So there's some things like that that, uh, that you don't really see um, that we see in a coach's meeting. Um, but I think our line's done a solid job. Is the protection, should it be better? Yes. There's sometimes, you know, you know you're, you're hot off a guy and you got to throw it and you're going to take a hit. That's what quarterbacks do. Um, and, uh, you know, but that's part of the game. You see it everywhere. You see it in the NFL. You see it in you know, other games. How do you assess your wide receiver group? Uh, Jerry Wayne's played very well. Yeah, you know, uh, Jared Wayne has played outstanding. He really has. He's the guy. We kind of knew that back in the summer. He's the leader of that group. Um, you know, the other guys have had opportunities, and you know, um, we obviously played a lot more three wideouts in, in the game Saturday uh, afternoon. And, and uh, you know, we got to step up. We got to make more plays. You know, we got opportunities to catch the ball, and we got to make it. I mean, when you look at just you look at the game in a nutshell. You know, we missed two field goals. Okay, we give them a, f a freebie at the end of the half. I mean, there's nine point different right there. Take into account that, uh, you know, we think there's a flag because someone gets, you know, wrapped around the waist across the middle. They throw the flag, they pick it up. We think there's a flag, so we got a free play. We throw it down the field, hits the receiver in the hands, and it gets dropped, and someone from over there, EJ, comes and scoops it up. We have with the same thing happen again, game of inches, and MJ gets an interception and his heel's out by an inch. Um, so it's just some of those things are just like it's one of those games that, you know, um, for whatever reason. I mean, you look at Nick Patty has a great touchdown run. You know, you guys watch the tape. Uh, I thought Jared Wayne not only caught the ball well, ran well with it after catches, I thought he blocked really well, too. Put it that way. Yeah, Dad, I'll, I'll take this so that Jerry doesn't have to. What's the status of your quarterback room at the moment? You know, like I always say, guys, I'm not, I'm not talking, you know, personnel. And, and uh, on Monday, we all know what we know. I know nothing. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> what about the, uh, the number three quarterback competition? You said in camp that it was mm -hmm. unsettled. Who was your number three quarterback on Saturday? I would say it's still unsettled. Um, 
I would say um, it's unsettled. So, I mean, you know, Kyler's been good. Nate Yarnell's been good. I mean, Nate Yarnell gives us most of the um, – he probably two out of three team periods, Nate's given us a look because uh, he's done it before. And we That's the guy we pick defensively like we want that guy. Um, so he's played more ball than Kyler has as far as just playing ball. Um, Derek's paying attention and, and, and locked into the offense because, you know, he's on that end. So I would say, you know, it's a toss-up who the third guy would be. Matt, speaking of quarterbacks, you're going up against a guy you guys recruited when he was in high school here in this area. What have you seen from him on film in his first two games for yeah, Western Michigan yeah. as a starter? Yeah, Silo Peck is, is a good football player. Played six snaps against us a year ago. Was accurate with all his short passes that he did throw in the game. Um, he moves well. Uh, he's tough, I think. I think he's a tough guy. Um, and, uh, and he operates the offense. I think he's real coachable. I mean, you watch him, he, you know, uh, from everything we gather, just very coachable guy that's going to do exactly the way they're supposed to do it. And I think that's what anybody could ask for out of a quarterback to operate the offense. And he does a nice job. They're very similar to what they were a year ago offensively. And, you know, and he's done, he's done, a, he's done a nice job so far in two games. You Again. mentioned uh, a while ago taking the freebie in the first half. Do you think about taking a knee with 21 seconds left? Right? Jerry, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no doubt about it. I mean, we didn't put a returner back. So we were returned about, you know, we we're really worried about it. And uh, yeah, you know, you go back and look, that's the one, you know, you guys talk timeouts, I think Saturday after the game, you know, I certainly wasn't going to call a timeout at the end of the game. That's why we kneel down in the fourth quarter and take it to overtime. We're going to take a chance and, and make something crazy happen like that. That happened there. Um, and, uh, and again, even on that play, if we just throw it to Bubs in the flat wide open, if we just throw it there and take that. Um, you know, we're probably feeling pretty good right now, but uh, it's not what happened. Pat, did that unsettledness at, at, at the number three quarterback spot, did that lead to did that factor in any of the decision to keep Nick in the game? Because it looked, just from where I was sitting, it looked like he was pretty, I mean, he was playing on one leg the last 15 plus minutes. Yeah, it didn't look that bad from the videotape I saw. I mean, you guys maybe, you know, make it look worse than it was, but, um, you know, Nick, Nick's a tough guy. I mean, first of all, Nick's tough, and, you know, Nick doesn't like to get hurt. And Nick's going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm good. And we're going to believe what Nick, if Nick says he's not good, we're going to you know, pull him out of there for, for health and safety reasons. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't see what you guys see just from watching the game tape on tape that, you know, maybe in between snaps, um, I, you know, we don't watch that. I don't watch the in-between. You guys are watching the in-between. We're worried about getting the next call and personnel and the rest. But, uh, but when he was out there, you know, he moved around well. Now, we weren't moving the pocket or running naked or anything like that with him. Um, so we knew we you know we didn't feel that good, but uh, you know, but that had nothing to do with it. I mean, if we had a third ready to go, but you know, third team guys aren't getting many reps during the week. Okay, second team guys aren't getting many reps to to Nick Patty's uh, uh, defense as well. So I mean, it's tough to get everybody reps, just like in the bowl game. It's tough to get everybody reps. Uh, I'm not sure if this question violates your injury policy, but yes, it was, does. Next question. Oh, oh. If, if if you don't think well, it does, I, I was just going to ask: Was Rodney at the game? Yes. Okay. Coach, you've obviously spent a number of years in the MAC. How has that level of football changed from then up until now? Yeah, Cor, good question. Um, I think it's changed a lot when you look at their depth charts. You know, you look at the depth chart here, we got, you know, transfer from Sam Houston, transfer from Western Illinois, Youngstown State transfer, Wisconsin transfer, Pitt transfer, BC transfer. Um, that's just on the on the offensive roster. Um, on the defensive roster, you know, um, VMI transfer, East Carolina transfer. Um, da -da 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 -da, let me see here. Um, Purdue transfer, uh, Pitt transfer, Illinois transfer, St. Francis transfer. So that's changed a lot. I mean, with opening transfer, you know, I think you know, I was telling a recruit the other day, like the, the, the portal has opened up. I think everybody's getting stronger. I think you're seeing some of these group of five teams, um, you know, beat people because they got a stronger roster than they had in the past. Everybody's weeding out their roster, getting rid of the weak, and they're and they're finding guys that are better than what they lost. Um, in the end, there's a lot of people not graduating, which is a bad thing. Uh, everybody jumps in thinking that the grass is greener, I'm going to get something else. Every, you know, I think college football is getting stronger as a whole, but I think there's a lot of kids losing out on scholarships and an education that they had. They thought they were going to still have it and didn't have it. So the weak are still in the portal, I think, if you do a good job evaluating. So um, it makes everybody stronger, I think. Yeah, when you brought in Kyler, what did you like about this game and yeah, um, you know, he, he's, he's smart, number one. Um, he can operate the offense, and we got trust that he can operate the offense. Um, you know, like, like Yarnell, I mean, uh, we know that he's had experience in games. 
Um, as you know, we lost you know two guys that had played in games before, so that's what we needed to get somebody just that had been in there, which um, you know it's, it, you know it was needed. Um, he's obviously got one year of eligibility, and uh, you know we, he he can operate. So um, you know his his touchdowns to interceptions like 42 TDs. I mean three interceptions, something like that. I mean just crazy. Threw for a lot. He's a leader, um, and he's he's, he's, a, he's a great kid. Yeah, they really did. Um, you know, they make it a little hard. I mean, you know, obviously less than 100 yards and less than three yards per carry, which is what you want. Um, but you know, some of the hard, harder runs are some of the quarterback draws. Uh, and, and, and again, we, if you had to look at the weakest part of the whole the whole show, and I talked about field goals and and nine points and you know interceptions and not interceptions and feet out of bounds. One of the probably. You know, the only thing we didn't do a great job of was tackling, you know, and Hendon Hooker, you know, I think he put on 15 pounds since last year, I think. Uh, he, he was, you know, he, he looked big out there and he didn't go down easy, you know. Um, so, you know, we did not tackle the quarterback well. We had, I think we had three sacks on the day, should have had six, seven. I mean, you know, you have, if we only had three, if we had four, you know, I, I think that the outcome's a little bit different. And But you only got three, and I think, you know, those are critical. We didn't tackle well. There's times, you know, they threw some nows out there that we got to go take shots and go make plays and played a little, you know, uh, you know, just wanted to make the play instead of make a big play and go make it for less yards. So there were some of those that I didn't like. So we got to get that cleaned up this this week. But, you know, run game, shoot. You know, and that's a team that can run the football. Um, but, no, we played it a lot better. It was, it was what it's supposed to look like. And we need to have that kind of effort and attention to detail in the run game all the time. When you and your uh, ACC coaches get together to talk about things, do you ever wonder why the ACC played so many road games against non-Power 5 schools? You know, I don't know who it is, road games. I don't count those up. I just know, you know, what I've been told, and I try to stay out of it. They say, hey, it's either this or this, and then I'll give my opinion. Um, but I think back when this game was scheduled and nobody wants to go, you know, on the road, period, uh, we'd like to have all of our home games at home, um, or every every game at home. Uh, but I think when it was scheduled, you know, from my knowledge, um, that's what th that was kind of the landscape of college football. Is people weren't taking, you know, it had to be a, you you weren't getting them. You know, it's like you want to go play, you know, let's just say Wisconsin um, on a home and home, or do you want to, you know, go play, you know, a Mid American or Group of Five school? Um, even with Marshall, I mean, we were supposed to go to Marshall in the COVID year. We didn't go, obviously, because of COVID. And we only played a conference schedule. But some of those things were happening at that time in scheduling um, that you, you know, really was no options. I mean, you, you look at it, I mean, you better schedule out, you know, 15 years. And maybe we don't schedule out far enough to get it, you know, where there's options. But nobody's, you know, at that point when we were trying to get games and you're trying to get your schedule filled out, sometimes you're stuck with, you know, what you have. But, uh it, Oh yeah, that's part of the I mean, it's in the I mean, they're, they're, you know, it's either that or you want to go out and play, you know, UNLV at UNLV, or you know, it's like so. There's you know, options are limited at times, um, but it seems to be coming back the other way now. So we hope to not have that that anymore. What is it about Western Michigan's defense that could potentially give you guys issues? You know, they got guys on scholarship. Um, they're playmakers. Um, you know, they're about 40 percent pressure. They like to they like to bring pressure. Uh, so we got to block them up front. I mean, it comes down to protection. You know, they see a lot of pressure. Our offense sees a lot of pressure um, against us. So, like I said, they're very similar to what we do. They're going to, you know, they're going to play, you know, they're going to bring five. They're going to bring six. Uh, they're going to play short in coverage. We know how to defend that kind of stuff, so it's good. Um, and um, it'll, be, it'll be a good football game. They're, they're well coached. You know, Coach Esposito does a great job, and they play hard. They play tough, and they'll be excited to be home. You mentioned the new OC there. Are they doing the same stuff they were doing last year offensively? Yeah, they yeah. Stuff and There's a lot of similarities. There's just some more stuff. Um, again, they ran more RPOs against us last year. They ran a lot out of, of the, out of the pistol against us and not anybody else. So we'll obviously get prepared for that. Um, but a lot of similarities. And, and Coach Lester, you know, the head coach is, uh, is an offensive guy. And uh, I know he'll have his hands in a game plan this week. I'm sure he had it in last week and the week before as well. So, uh, he, you know, he's going he's gonna to have his opinions and, and thoughts and, hey, we need to do this or try this. Um, so th th there's a lot of similarities offensively. That's why I hired him. The guy was very like-minded uh, like he is. A tough watch to uh, reviewing the game film from last year for you guys? Not really. I mean, I, I shouldn't say not really. Every game is tough. If you don't make a play, um, you know, I haven't watched the offense side of the ball, but I think everybody forgets that we had three turnovers in that game. You ain't winning a game with three turnovers. 
and uh, you know we got kind of torn apart a little bit and we got to stop the run again and you know, everybody will get upset if they throw a, you know, a slant route or a skinny, skinny post or glance route, whatever it may be, or you know, a five-yard out or a ten-yard out route to the field, uh, which we're prepared for all of them. You know, people, you know, I mean, I thought Harry Cowell played a heck of a game. Um, but, you gotta, but we didn't stop the run well enough to go with that, and that was the problem back then. But I think our kids were like, you know, I'm running in there, and then they're throwing it over my head, so they start to get, but we'll make sure that doesn't happen this year. You guys only had one touchdown on five red zone trips, whereas you had three for three the week before. Looking back, what do you guys have to clean up to capitalize on more of those opportunities? You know, we've got to make more plays and, and, and got to be you know crisp route runners and, and, and make better decisions down there. I mean, really, it's, it comes down to that. We, we had some plays, you know. We had some plays, and, you know, and I know you guys don't get the end zone copy, but we had some plays that are there. we got to, we got to finish the play. we got to make the plays, and, and uh, we didn't do that. Receivers were breaking off, like the above means broke their out too early. But there's still some issues there, just with time. No, we were better with our, you know, with our, you know, our revolutions or our route running. We were better with our depth of our routes. Um, now, I shouldn't say all of them, you know. And then all of a sudden, we got a tailback, maybe one that's, you know, in, you know, the skinny stuff or the, the you know, hard post or skinny post. Some of those still. Um, but again, I think that's part of, you know, new offense, second game, and. You know, and again, it's a, it's it's learning situation. I mean, learning situations for our kids. I mean, they're going to continue to learn how we want to do it and how it has to be done. And there's no wiggle room for it to be done any other way. Uh, you have a number of players back from last year. You were good last year, bouncing back after losses. Do you see this same type of qualities with, with this group? Yeah, sure. Hope so. That's that's the plan. Um, this is a total reverse from last week or last year. Last year, we're coming off an emotional win. Uh, I think our kids were feeling themselves. Um, or you know. Now this year it's it's you know it's Tennessee then Western Michigan it's Tennessee then Western Michigan, um, so it's a total different uh, deal. So we're going to see how our kids respond. You know they went through adversity on Saturday. I thought they handled it well, um, and now they're going to go through a week of adversity, and, and we'll find out what happens Saturday night. Uh, question, Jerry. Go ahead. I was gonna, I was going to ask about. Uh, uh, we're not going to let you. You came in late. You know. <laughs> But I was gonna, I was gonna ask. Jared Wayne continues to look like he's polished his game a lot more from last year. What have you seen from him, also as a leader off the field, that's kind of stepped up with his play? Yeah, we talked about that all August. I mean, he's just a, he's a, he's, he's, he's such an unbelievable young man. I tell you, he's a, he's a man. He's not even probably young anymore. He's an old man. Um, but uh, he, he is the leader. He's the leader of that room. And uh, you know, we need him to even lead more. We got to get those other young guys, those new guys, to come. You know, they, they got to they got to uh, mature a little bit faster than they are right now, and uh, we need those other guys to make plays if we're going to put them on the field. Jerry, go ahead. You get the last one. You played two four-hour games in a row. On, on Sunday, on Sundays, do you see any effects of that when you guys come in here yesterday? Um, not really. I mean, they're noisy as could be, you know. Um, so not really. I mean, I don't see any. They're, they're, they're noisy. I can tell you that. There's no, like, they weren't just sitting here like exhausted or tired. Um, they're they're energetic still. They're kids. We would feel we would feel four hours, but uh, I don't think they feel four hours. You bring them in the afternoon, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah but just a follow because I saw the expression you made when Jerry asked you that question. Is it? I mean, are these games too long? There's a lot of reviews, a lot of officials hanging out together, going, "Yeah, that was holding, but let's wipe it off." You know, let's you know. There's a lot of crazy. I mean, I've never seen so many in two games. You know, flags picked up off the ground. Um, but um, I think they they're getting long. Yeah, a lot of plays. Forget the length. Um, you know, and again, you know, our offense won the time possession um, by 10 minutes, I think. And uh, and again, I guess the team won it because it's when you go three and out and have a 54 second drive uh, that helps the situation. And we're running the ball and having long drives, but. Um, you know, the games are getting longer, I think. I mean, you like them to be somewhere in a three and a half, but um, a lot of indecision on the field.